Fly away. Birthday shout out time. Yeah, 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 yeah
I'm excited because God is doing big things in all of our lives around the world. Amen. He's doing it from coast to coast. Amen. And he's doing it from home to home. Praise God. And he has some amazing things in store for the believer this 2021. 2018 blessings, 2019 blessings, 2020 blessings, and all the 2021 blessings. I am what excited about what the Lord is doing. He's up to something big, y'all. And he's going to reveal it. He's constantly going to reveal it to his believers. Amen. His children. He wants to know that he's about to harvest our lives and he's about to deliver on the promises. Praise God. He's about to come through in a way, in such a way that we would know undeniably that he is God. And beside him, there is no other. He can't be compared to, how are you going to compare my God and your God to the devil? Come on now. That's an insult. How are we going to compare God to an angel? Praise God. How are we going to compare God to a little job or a little car or a home? Come on. There's material stuff on there. We cannot compare him to anything because he stands alone. Come on. He's God all by himself and he can do anything. Come on. But fail. Praise God. All things are possible to them that believe. Your problem, my problem might be we have a believing problem. Praise God. God, his biggest desire is to be believed by his people. And we need to start believing God. Everything that he spoke, child of God, everything that he prophetically spoke, everything that he spoke in that dream, come on, through a prophetic word, everything that he shared with you, I want all my blessings. Praise God. I don't want to leave nothing here on the earth. I don't want to leave nothing in, in, uh, in spiritual warehouse heaven. I want everything that he promised me to come down here and to manifest in my hands. Praise God. We got stuff to do. Come on, we got people to bless, people to see, people to connect with. Come on, we got, we got, we got souls to snatch from the hands of Satan. Come on now. We got to steal, I mean, not steal, we're going to snatch, praise God, uh, souls from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And it may take resources. It may take a, a brand new car. It may take you inviting somebody to dinner. Amen. It may take you inviting them on a trip. Whatever. I don't know. But it may take resources that God says, I'm going to bless you, Abraham, and your seed so that you can be a blessing. Praise God. That's why I believe we're supposed to be blessed. The world's supposed to know that we're the chosen people. We're the blessed people. And we're supposed to have it when God calls for it. When he tells you, pay for the person, pay it, pay it for this person in the, in, 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 in the back of you. I want you to pay for all their groceries. We don't know. We, but you got to be empowered to do that kind of stuff. So I know God's getting ready to bless us real good. Get us out of debt. Those that got homes that need to be paid off, I confess and prophetically speak, is paid in full in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, debt free in Jesus' name. Debt free in Jesus' name. We call it piff, paid in full. Praise God. I, I confess those that have car loans and those that are dealing with uh, cars need to be paid off, I confess and prophetically speak, piff, paid in full. Those that got credit card debt, praise God, up to your neck, to your eyeballs, come on to your eyelashes, praise God. I command and speak prophetically, Piff, paid in full. Those that got medical bills, that's a real deal. Come on, this COVID-19 atmosphere. But COVID and all his imps, skimps, demons, come on, got to go in the name of Jesus. And I command COVID to dry up, amen, to the, go back to the dry places and never to return. First strand, second strand, third strand, and any future strand. Praise God. Bind it in the name. We bind it and wrap it up. With the power of God. We're not going to keep letting this stuff just keep, you know, oh, there's another strand out there stronger than ever. The devil lives a lie. We bind it in the mighty name of Jesus. And people that need to take their vaccination, go get your shots, do what you got to do. We're ready for this thing to get off the earth so we can come back to the house of worship. The devil meant to take the body of Christ out with this COVID-19. He meant to give us a blow that will cause a death blow to us. But how many know you can't stop what God has started? Praise God. And baby, let me tell you something. You can't stop what God has ordained. You can't curse what God has blessed. Amen. And the church is blessed. Praise God. That's his baby. Come on. And his baby ain't going nowhere in the name of Jesus. The body of Christ is Jesus' baby. Come on now. It's God's baby. And he, it ain't going nowhere. I don't care what comes on the earth. It ain't going nowhere because God ordained it. God has released the church. We are the ecclesia, the church. Praise God. Not the physical building. And we're going to come back here too because this is our assembly place. This is where we come and get our feeding. Come on. This is where we come and get our fellowship on, our konania on. Praise God. This is where we come and, 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 and you know, uh, if you will, you know, huddle up in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Get the instructions for what's going to be and get the grace on us. Come on, get the oil on us and all that good stuff that happens in the church. So y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on, everybody. I'm about to blow some fuse right out the gate this morning. Hit that share button. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I am. I'm excited about the blood of Jesus. Got my red... Got my red on the armor. I'm, man, I'm covered in the blood. I'm telling you, 
I got some stuff I want to share with you, a testimony a little later, but we're going to talk about that because we got to finish this stuff on how we're going to better ourselves. How are we going to keep bettering ourselves in 2021? And I'm telling you, the perfect uh, lesson last week to me was that getting the blood of Jesus, being up under the blood of Christ, having a relationship with the Lord, is one of the best ways that you can better yourself. It's one of the best, I mean, when I say the be- it is the best way that you can better yourself, having a personal relationship with him. It's not just being religious. It's real talk. Jesus makes the difference. The blood of Jesus makes all the difference in our lives, y'all. It really, really does. Hey, I got a couple of scriptures to give you. We're going to dive in. I don't know if we're going to get past porn 14. I'm going to let you know, right? My, my minister, my good minister, my daughter said we're on porn 14, so we're going we're gonna to share that point. We may not get off that point. That I don't know. I'm not trying to drag this lesson out, but when I teach, I like for you to get the lessons and understand uh, the depth of them. I like to take my time. I don't like to rush. Pray. We ain't in no rush until God say get off of it. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. Thank you for being on the other end there. So there's no need to rush the lessons. We need to get the fullness. It's almost like... Um, how many of you can appreciate when your mom and maybe your, your aunts or uncles or whoever was having dinner around the table with a couple of the children and some of the family members? And how many know that one family member that's eating the chicken and they leaving a whole lot of meat on that bone? You know, they're just messing up the food. You know what I mean? And you got that one family member, a couple of family members, boy, they eat down to the gristle. You know what I'm saying? They eat all the meat. You got that one cousin, it's, it'd be a whole lot of meat on that bone. And, and the parents, somebody say, boy, 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 give me the, give me the, give me the, give me the, give me the chicken, boy. Well, you break the food over here. They take that same meat and bring it on their plate and debone that thing. You understand? I mean, it's still, what I'm, all I'm trying to say is there's still a lot of meat. Come on, we got to finish. I got 21 points. I got this, a lot of meat we got to get off of these bones. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to take my time. Uh, I'm not trying to drag it out, but we go, I, I got a lot of, it's still got a lot of meat on the bones. Praise God. We got to debone it. We got to de-meat it, if you will, debone or whatever. Uh, we got to get all the meat off the bone. Praise God. So, hey, hit the share button again for me. Let people know uh, that connected to the World of Him broadcast on there. I'm excited. Thank you again for tuning in. I appreciate every Sunday morning that you tune in or whenever you're tuning in. I know some of you don't hit it Sunday morning. Some of you hit it on Monday. Some of you hit it when you, you know, you're available when you're not working or whatever the case may be. I want you to know how grateful I am that you are tuned in to this broadcast. It means so much. My YouTubers, those that are tuned in, not just by Facebook, but YouTubing it, looking on your big screen TV, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'm telling you, nothing's going to make the difference. Nothing that's going to make the difference in this life but the word in our lives. That's what believers, that's why I want you to take time, especially my Him Church members. Him Church, I want y'all to know, man, this is what we, this is what we live on right here, the word, man. We, this is all we got. This is our life source uh, for the believer. This is what's going to make us the better. This is what's going to make us better husbands, better wives. Come on, better uh, uh, aunts and uncles, aunts and uncles, and uh, better people, better uh, employees, employers. You know what I mean? It's going to make us. It's going to make us better in all arenas of our lives. The Word of God. You cannot dismiss this thing. I got something I'm going to share with you. It's going to bless you, boy. It happened to me uh, this past week. But it blessed me. God gave me a whole, like a, a mini little sermon in that thing I'm going to share with you before we conclude tonight. But look, I'm excited. So let's go over here, and we're going to pick up on 14, uh, point number 14, because, again, I want you to be fully developed to get all that God has ordained for your life to be. I don't want you to miss nothing because you're, you're, you know, you're not mature enough to handle what God is about to do in your life. I don't want you to miss the blessing of God. I said, nah, they're not quite mature enough to handle this level of blessings. I want you to grow gracefully so you can handle every level. Come on now. There, there, I, I believe, that I, I remember times in my life when I wasn't ready for all of this. I remember that. You know, I thought I was, but it wasn't. Praise God. And God has to grow you to things, get you ready so you won't quit. Some of you quit too soon. Some of you got quitting on the mind. Some of you Get fullness of blessing you can't handle. Your life can't handle the capacity of what God really wants to do for you. So he grows you in grace to handle the capacity of ministry, the capacity of being a father, the capacity of being a husband. Come on now. The fullness of being who you are. He grows you into that so that you won't quit on it. Praise God. I don't know about you. I'm not quitting, man. God got too many, He got too much invested in many of us to quit, you know. And we, we, watch this now. When you're not fully developed, quitting is on your brain. Amen. When people are not fully developed, come on, in life, they quit a whole lot. Amen. Some of them drop out of things, drop out of hospital, drop out of, they just quit. They get frustrated and quit. So you want to be developed to the point where you have the tenacity, come on, to, to stay in there and to stay the course with finishing. Amen. Being a finisher is a blessing. Being able to stick with something through a process. Some of us don't like process. Process is not cute. 
Come on, working out is not cute. It's ugly. Come on. It's ugly. Praise God. Sweating all over your body, everywhere, every part of your body, releasing toxins, whatever. It's, it's ugly. It ain't nothing cute about it. Come on, but, it, but, but the process, you know, going to give you a, a great end result if you can stick with the process. And some of us abandon process because we, we love the results. Come on, we're working out, but we don't like process. You see, many, many people don't like process. You got to go through the process to get the results, to get the rewards. Praise God. You know, we press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ. We press. There's a press. We press toward the mark of the high calling. Praise God. There's not a low calling. There's a high calling. And you got to press towards that thing. You know, like bench press, it, it takes resistance to build muscle. Praise God. You got to press. Praise God. Amen. And so with that being said, we're going to go to point 14. Thank you again for tuning in. I love you. I'm praying for your family. This is going to be a good broadcast. So you might want to get your tea, your mojo, whatever you're drinking. Praise God. Your, your eggnog, whatever you're drinking, praise God. Your virgin eggnog, your, your mixed up eggnog. I don't know what you're drinking. Praise God. Just get it and let's get into this word. Pray. I ain't judging. Amen. I'm not the judge. I'm just the jury. Praise God. I just want to give you this here so we can move on with the points. All right. Now, point 14, if we'll give some scripture reference here momentarily, is this point. It says, Develop, development will cause my mind to be expanded to new concepts and ideas. All right. Point 14, development amen, will cause my mind to be expanded to new concept and ideas. Come on, everybody, look up from the television, wherever, you, wherever you're tuned in this morning. I want to deal a little bit about the mind because you know what? It, it, it is something that, um, that we have to deal with in regards to our mind. See, the Bible, the Bible has a very, very, very powerful, very powerful scripture, and I want us to go over there, Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at this because you need to understand how the human mind works, amen? This is a beautiful mind. We have a beautiful, a beautiful brain. We have a beautiful, God made us so wonderfully, you know, like the way he put us together. You know, uh, we, didn't, we didn't derive from no monkeys and apes. We're, we're too strategically put together. You know what I mean? It's just too, it just too, too, too defined, too refined how we are made. And to say that we came from a big bang theory, the earth, and that we came from, we derived from animals and all that. The devil is a liar, praise God. The Bible says, let it receive, produce after his own kind. And uh, humans came from humans. Praise God. God made us in, his, in the likeness of, of his image. In his likeness did he make us. And so we came from God. Praise God. So we didn't come from no animals. The Bible said we were made in his image. So we need to embrace what the word says. Not what some, what some, uh, what some the, not theological, but what some daggone uh, uh, humanitarian or hu uh, uh, humanism uh, from, from theory have said. Those are doing science work and all that. And we honor the work of science. But, you know, when it's, when it's coming against the word, we don't embrace that. I didn't come from no monkey. You didn't come from no monkey. Praise God. Uh, monkeys still getting monkeys. Amen. <laughs> and the gorillas still producing gorillas. Elephants still producing elephants. Amen. And humans are still producing humans. Amen. Come on now. That's what the Bible said. That every seed, every bearing, every seed produced after its own kind. Praise God. That, that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not deep. Praise God. So we need to embrace what the word says. Now look at this. I want to give you the scripture here. Don't want to belabor the point. Romans chapter 8, verse number 7. Come on, everybody, hit the share button. Let's get up to, man, let's get up to like two or 3,000 shares, man. I mean, give me, give me as much share as you can do this morning. I mean, really, if you love me, just, just hit the share button. That's what I need you to do. Don't be lazy. Let your fingers do the talking. Just hit that share button so we can get everybody online. Praise God. All right, just reach out to your friends. Let them know we're on the air. Look at this scripture here, very powerful scripture. One of the, uh, uh, one of, one of, one of the uh, things that really explain about the flesh, about the carnal nature of the flesh. And, uh, but it's powerful. I'll, let it, I'll, I'll read it and let, let the scripture talk for itself. Look at verse number, uh, let's look at verse 7. It says, uh, well, let's look at verse number, um, let's look at verse 5. It says, for uh, the flesh, for, for well, let's look at verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the things, the spirit, uh, excuse me, they that are after the, the spirit, the things of the spirit, all right? Uh, verse 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Here's my punchline in my impact verse. Verse 7 says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Let me read it to you in Amplified. Verse 7 says, that is because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purpose is hostile to God. For it does not submit itself to God's law 
Indeed, it cannot. Look up, everybody. The Bible tells us very clearly that your human mind don't want to get with the program of God. And that's something, your mind, that the beautiful mind that he made. And see, this is where we go back to that carnal nature we talked about uh, last week about that, that iniquity. You know, we were, uh, uh, Psalms 51, rather than Psalms 51, tomorrow, we, were, we were shaped and born in iniquity. So when, you, when that happens, it's like the human mind just come out hating the things of God. It don't want to pray. Come on. It don't want to get with the Word. It don't want to read the Word. But these things are going to make us better. You understand? Spending time in the Word, spending time in prayer, it's going to make us better. Praise God. It's going to shave off flesh. It's going to shave off things that you're battling with. You know what I mean? That's why the devil, again, the Bible says the flesh is it, it's like it hates God. The very thing that he created hates him. Boy, isn't that something? The very thing, it's like it's almost like you, you purchase a dog. And I'm not... I'm not, belate, not, not, not <laughs> putting us compared to a dog, but this is the scenario. It's like you, you get that dog, you raise that dog, and you, you take care of that dog all your life, and you feed that dog. Then that, that, dog, that same dog that you send a lot of love to, tender, tenderness and kindness, and showing mercy, and he's a big dog now, he turns around and bites you, or turns around against the owner. That's how the flesh is against God. He the one that created our flesh. He made us, right? He made Adam and Eve. He made us. He made our flesh. And it's like because of the sin nature, the flesh automatically comes out hating God. I mean, hate the things. It says enmity. It, it hates the things of the kingdom. And so here, watch this. The point 14 says this. Development will cause my mind to be expanded to new concepts and ideas. Now, here's what I want you to understand. It's not talking about the carnal mind. Which we're going to go to another scripture here. It's talking about a renewed mind. Praise God. All right, so it's talking about a person that's spending time in the Word. When you spend time in the Word, when you spend time... I mean, I'm spending time in prayer and spending, God is giving me ideas and stuff. I'm, all, I'm working on my third book now, y'all, my third 365 Daily Inspirational Quotes. When I'm spending time with him, he like, give me fresh thoughts. Come on now. Give me things in my mind that I'm not even thinking about, and I know it's from the throne of God. I know in and of myself, I'm really not that smart. Praise God. Some of you might be. Praise God. My smarts, I'm like Paul. I count it as dung. I don't know nothing, Lord. I, I come to him like empty. I don't know nothing, Lord. Show me. Praise God. And boy, I'm telling you, when I open myself up like that, he makes me look real good. Y'all don't know. He makes me look like I got a PhD. And I do have a PhD I earned, praise God. But it's all about him. I don't count on that PhD. Come on now. I count on what he, what he does through my life and how he, he, the genius of the Holy Spirit or the smarts of all my, I depend on that to make me shine. Come on, I give. And he knows if I'm shining, I'm going to tell people that he did it. I'm going to tell people what Jerome Taylor, come on now. Come on, this was not the work of a hand of a man. This was the work in the genius of God. Come on now. Even to the way it's all designed. This was all God. Praise God. Wasn't nothing about my genius. Even with the purple carpet coming down the middle and the olive carpet, that was the only thing available for us on sale. Come on now. You know what I mean? Because I wanted purple carpet all through the day. He said, no, no, no. It's going to be olive. It's going to have, the, uh, it's gonna have royalty sitting on, sitting on the anointing. Praise God. Amen. And I'm telling you, so God is genius, man. I mean, he just is genius. Praise God. So look, let's go to one other scripture that I want you to see where the scripture says here. That um, this the particular piece says that, that the mind is enmity against God. So I want to go to the one that said, let this mind, which is Philippians 2.5. Let's go over there real quick, and I'm going to get into some other things to share with you. Philippians 2.5, it says this one here. It says, uh, let this mind, watch this, verse number 5, praise God. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. So you telling me, Lord, that I can have the same mind as Christ? Yes. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Yes, you can have the same mindset that Christ had while he was in the earth. While the same mindset he has while he's sitting on the throne right now. You know what I mean? And so that's powerful to me because God's not going to tell you that, you that you can do something and you don't have the ability to do it. He'll be lying. And we know the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So my capacity, watch this, y'all. My capacity is to walk in the same grace that Christ did. Mm, boy, that ain't going over real good. My, my, my capacity, your capacity is to walk in the same level of grace that he did. Come on now. That's why he says stuff like, greater work shall you do. You're going to do greater stuff than he did. Come on now. You have the capacity. You have the ability to. Now, some of us probably never will, but he's telling us, you have the ability, child. I'm going to put the same, you know, the Bible says that, that, that uh, the same grace that the, the same anointing that raised Christ from the dead resides on the inside of us. That's powerful. Come on now, that's powerful. Same, same anointing that raised him from the dead. Now, that's powerful now. You mean talking about anointing, boy, that's anointing. That, that's anointing, man. I mean, you're talking about somebody, 
That, 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 they need to make some movies of that for real. You kill a man, he get back up. That's scary. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's powerful. You can't kill him. You know, you kill somebody, then they get back up. He, he ain't exterminated and all that. He, it's real deal. You kill him, he get back up in three days. Yeah, that's powerful. I mean, that's powerful. You, you can't kill God. Praise God. I mean, you kill him, he, he just get right back up. I mean, but you got to understand what resides on the inside of you. And the truth of the matter is, when you kill a human being, you really don't kill him because the, the spirit lives forever. Praise God. Rather than damnation or in heaven, eternal glory. You can't kill a spirit. Praise God. You can't. God, when he made us, uh, when he made us tripartite nature, spirit, soul, and body, right? That first uh, Thessalonians 5.23, when he made us there, right? Uh, he, he made us tripartite nature, means three parts of the human experience, spirit, soul, and body. But when he created the human spirit, he created the human spirit to live forever. That's why human spirit, when we don't do right, when we don't accept the plan of God, the plan of salvation that he laid out beautifully through Christ, the redemptive work, right? The atonement of what, I mean, you know, for Christ to be the atonement for sin. When you don't accept that plan, your soul, your spirit, if you will, go to damnation. It burns forever. It cannot be, it cannot die. You know what I mean? That's why it goes to hell with Satan. That's where Satan's going. The lake of fire is going to keep burning and he's going to keep being tormented because the spirit can't die. How about that? You live forever. You'll live forever one way or the other in eternal damnation or eternally in heaven with God. And God wants you to come with him, not to go with the Satan because he needs to go there by himself. You understand? He needs to, he need to go to Hades by himself. And you don't need to be following him there, you know, with all, with, you know, follow him to my, you know, you, you, know, <laughs> you know, all the stuff you think that you, you want to enjoy in this life. It ain't that deep to me that, that, that I want to live my life and please Christ and do what he tells me to do and live a holy a, a life of righteousness and do right by him. So when I close my eyes, I have an eternal place in heaven. Come on now, my soul is secured because I've given my life, I've given the dedication of my whole life to live for him. It's not that deep. Come on, it's not that deep. We want to make the salvation thing, uh, it is a deep thing to have, but it's not that deep to maintain, to live for him, to do right. Come on, to accept, Lord, I accept your son, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And I won't be ashamed. Come on now. I'm not going to be ashamed about it. Come on now. Romans 1. I'm not, I'm not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to be ashamed. Hold my head down like there's something to be embarrassed about. No, this is, this is what I do. This is who I am. This is what I'm all about. Praise God. Come on now. I'm just saying because some of us are ashamed of God and shame. No, 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 no. One. <laughs> come on now. I, I, you know, that's what the scripture talks about. I, I'm not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not going we're, we're to let that be our not going to be the, let that be our mentality. Amen. We're excited about God. I love the Lord. Amen. Grown behind man. I love the Lord. Praise God. Nothing wrong with being in love with another man either. Yeah, I love the Lord. You hear me? Nothing wrong with loving your brothers and sisters when your heart is right. You, there's no uh, ill will towards uh, ill will towards them or even some uh, 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 some kind of erotic love towards them. It's like a, a brotherly love, a sisterly love towards one another. Nothing wrong with loving another man or woman loving another woman. Nothing wrong with that. Because God created us to love each other. Amen. Amen. So we, we in our minds, we let the devil twist us up in things and that's, that's where it gets crazy. At. But look, look at this. Let's look at one more thing before we uh, let this go. Uh, because again, that scripture said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, this is what we must do uh, to, to maximize point 14 because point 14 says development will cause my mind to be expanded. Anytime you get into the Word, anytime you start spending time with God, He's going to always expand your thinking, all right? Let's go to Romans 12, 1 and 2. Anytime you spend time with God, anytime you spend time in the Word, anytime you start reading prayers or uh, going over things, uh, God's going to always cause something to happen on the inside of you. Praise God. There's something that's going to trigger. The anointing is going to trigger something on the inside of you and cause your mind to be expanded. What am I saying? You're going to get ideas sitting in service while the man of God is teaching the word of God. You're going to get ideas while, you being while you're in prayer. Stuff going to be dropping in your spirit. I mean, I'm telling you, most people that get ideas, business people, especially those that are, love the Lord, saved to the bone, praise God, they got the ideas to do the most craziest thing. God just dropped it in their spirit. But, they're, but guess what? They're, they're, their spirit was open to receive or being expanded to new concepts. I mean, they, they didn't think on that, that business idea on their own. It's like God open their minds to think, have you thought about this? You need to pursue this. You know, it's like the stuff he drops on us, man. You know, I remember when he first started dealing with me about writing a book. So I'm going to give you some thoughts. I just used to write it down. And every day he'd give me a thought. Like every day he'd just visit me and give me a thought. And I would just write it down. He said, now, I want you to keep writing. Just don't worry about it right now. And then he said, after I wrote everything down for 365 days, he said, I want you now to put it into a book form. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, it was amazing. I had a calendar. Never forget it. Every day on that calendar, when I wake up in the morning, God was like, have a fresh thought for me. And I was like, 
God, this ain't nobody but you. I mean, how, how could a man come up with, don't let the devil park in the driveway of your mind? That ain't no man. That ain't no genius of no man. That's a, that's a God thought. Don't let the devil park in the, in, the, in the driveway of your mind. You know, it's like God just drops stuff like that on you. You know what I mean? I mean, just, just you know, you know, I mean, just, just amazing stuff. I mean, I can't, get the book. Come on, get the book. Shameless plug. Get this, this the 365 Daily Inspirational uh, Volume 1, Volume 2. Very, very will bless you. Working on Volume 3 right now, and he's giving me those thoughts. Matter of fact, I am probably a, uh, uh, I wouldn't say half, well, I'm, I might be not even halfway finished with the book. I'm getting close to halfway finished with it. But again, I don't write until he speaks. Praise God. If he ain't saying that, I ain't trying to come up with nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When he speaks, then I'm writing. When he says something fresh, I know it's him. I'm writing. Praise God. That's how my books are formed. I mean, he wants to talk to me or share something fresh with me, I write it down. That's how I know the books will bless you because if you're reading it, come on now, it's not the thoughts of a man, it's the thoughts of the Holy Ghost. And not like the thoughts of the Holy Ghost. Come on, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Come on, y'all, hit the share button real quickly. We're still on this point because I want your mind to be expanded through development. You're going to be developed through reading this word, spending time with God. That's how the human mind is expanded. Come on, the human mind is expanded. All the old thoughts, all the negative thoughts, you need to spend time in the word. If you don't spend time in the Word, people of God, your mind will not be expanded to new concepts and ideas. It just won't. You have old thoughts that will say, I can't do it. I don't have the resources. I don't have enough money. I don't know who to connect with. I don't have a business plan. Okay, I did. we did all this without a business plan. Praise God. And the only business plan we had was the kingdom plan. I'm just saying now, how y'all do all this? What was your business plan? G-O-D. He gave me a bunch of instructions. I just followed them. That's a plan. That's a business plan. It was a kingdom business plan. It wasn't your traditional business plan that we got all this done. He gave me wisdom in how to do it, how to approach it. Come on, how to get rally my leaders together, how to rally the church together. It, it really was. I, I didn't, you know, it wasn't nothing I went to school for, nothing like that with a PhD. I, I, I received his plans in prayer. What he kept telling me to do, I obeyed them. And see, God will make you look smart because somebody think, will tell you to take a business plan to accomplish all that we accomplished. And I'm telling you, I did not have a business plan. A traditional business plan. Boy, it's quiet out there. It's like cricket land out there. Come on, everybody. Hit the spare, hit, the, hit the, uh, the share button and the comment button because I want you to understand when God gives you instructions, who's going to override that? What other instructions do you need? Well, Lord, I got to get it. Well, God said, I gave you the instructions. Just, just be bold. The Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. Glory to God. You just need to be bold enough to carry out what God told you to do. Come on with simple childlike faith and step towards what God has instructed you to do. Most of us don't understand and have an, uh, have an appreciation for learning how to follow instructions. You have to follow instructions. When God is speaking, you got to move. You can't be, you can't be shucking and jiving, man. You got to move. When he tell you to do something, just move. Don't, don't, try, to, don't try to get your mind involved. Because watch this. The Bible says again that the mind is enmity against God. So don't even trust your mind to figure it out. Because God ain't trying to minister to your senses. He ain't going to make sense when he talks to you. Son, go buy this building that's a million dollars. Lord, we don't have, have 20000 in the bank. We don't have 10 in the bank as a church, young church. Come on now. We don't, uh, Lord, go buy this million dollar facility. So I had to get my mind out of it. Glory to God. I had to take my physical, psychological thinking out of it. I had to get my whole self out of this thing. A million dollars in 2004? Come on, I'm talking about 2004 now. I ain't talking about right now. I'm talking about 2004 when he was telling us to get this building, get this joint. Matter of fact, we were looking at the building for another pastor friend of ours. God said, no, it's not his. It's yours. It's, it belongs to him church. Well, not him church. He said at the time, because we didn't have him church, uh, the, the same him church, he said it belongs to Heart to Heart International Ministries. This is, it belongs to, the, to him, not, you know, Heart to Heart International Ministries. I'm like, Lord, but this is my mic. I'm saying, a million dollars? You know what he had to keep saying to me? Son, do I, do I not own the whole world? Do I not own a, 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 a thousand cattle on the hill? Do I not own everything? Can, am I not God? Can I not create it? Can I not lead you to someone who got what you need? Why are you worrying about this money? I didn't ask you about how much money you had. I told you the first instruction was go find the man that owned it. Lord have mercy. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. He said, I didn't ask you nothing about no money. The first instruction he gave Dr. Tani and I, he said, go find the man that owns the building. Y'all better hear what the bishop is saying. See, your problem is like my problem was. See, I was down at point 10. He was at point 1. And as long as I was at point 10, I was being frustrated 
because he wasn't even worried about no money. He didn't tell me anything about no money. He said, go find the man that owned the building. So I had to back my little self up and follow the first set of instructions. See, this is one of the quotes in the book that God gave me too, that he wrote through me. God is only obligated to bless the instructions that he gave you. He's only obligated to bless the instructions that he gave you. If you own some other instructions, you own your own. And then you got to pull it off. You got to stress about how you're going to pay for it. You got to stress out about how it's going to jump off. See, when you follow his instructions, then his instructions always take you I in. It takes you into the blessings. It brings you into the promises. When you follow instructions, come on, it causes construction. When you follow any other instructions, it's going to call destruction. Praise God. You know what I mean? When you follow any other instructions besides his, it's going to cause you to go down. And so I had to back my little mind up, and I had to get in the flow of what he was saying. Son, go find the man who owns the building. How simple is that? Go find the man who owns the building. I didn't ask you about nothing else, son. You, you way on something that you ain't supposed to be on. Boy, I'm telling you, he had to walk me through that thing. I said, okay, daddy, father, I'm going to find him. We found the man who owned the building. Then I found the man who owned the building. He gave me the next set of instructions. Y'all would hear me. Because God is, he's strategic, and he's a master strategist. And he knows exactly what he's doing, and we have to trust him to every process. We have to trust him to every word. Come on, to every prophetic utterance, what he tells us to do. Then he kept giving us some crazy instructions like, get, ask the man for the key. Ask the man, can you hold the key to come in the building and look at it when you want to. And, you know, we called Mr. Orr. We've been back and forth to the building. We had to meet him up here. We wanted to get in and look at it. And one day he finally gave us a key. And then one of my friends in Atlanta Come on, one of my good friends, pastor friend of mine, he said, if the man ever give you the key, the building belongs to you. He said, if the key is turned over to you, if he give that key to you and tell you to access it anytime you want to, that building belongs to you. He said, don't worry about nothing else. If you get the key in your hand, the building belongs to you. Then God gave me some other instructions. Every night I want you to come to the building, lay hand on it, and confess that it belongs to the Heart to Heart International Ministry. I just want you to go in the outside of the building, lay hands, both hands on it, and confess the building got to come into y'all's ownership. Come in the inside. I know it looked like nothing is going to happen in here. I know it looked dilapidated. I know it looked like it just like tore up for the floor. And it was. It was jacked up and they moved the body. You know what I'm saying? Just confess that it belongs to Heart to Heart International Ministries. Glory be to God. Woo, glory, glory, glory. Just confess that it belongs to Him Church. Glory to God. Hit the share button, everybody. I'm to my boy. Look here. It was a process of faith. It was a process of faith. And he said, you have everything you need right now to obtain this building. You don't need no money right now. You just need faith to believe. You don't need no money right now. You just need to come. You need, I, need to try, I need to get your mind to believe that it belongs to you first before I can give you the money. Oh, boy. Hear, hear me. I got to get you to believe that it belongs to you before I even put the money in your hand, son. Because if you don't believe it, then you're going to lose it anyway. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Hit the share button, everybody. I had to believe that this thing was already done before it got done. You have to see your vision before you see it. Glory to God. You have to have your vision before you have it. And you're talking about God developing my little mind. Boy, he was messing, he was messing this, uh, this 400 up, boy. But he was dealing with me and getting me ready. The capacity that, son, you can own this. The church can own this whole campus. I said, God, but if you give me the piggly wiggly, the church, man, this will be something phenomenal that I know we'll never forget. He said, son, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to place it in your hands. I'm going to give you the whole campus. Glory be to God. The church going to own the whole entire campus. I said, Lord, but a million dollars? He said, I didn't tell you to worry about no million dollars. You worry about too much, son. See, you know, my mind still want to go on that million dollars, you know what I mean? And, but God said, don't worry about that right now. Just follow my instructions. And people of God, let me tell you something. He began to expand my mind. I had to get into the Word. I had to get around faith people. Come on now. I had to get into uh, faith teachings. Praise God. I had to listen to men of God that were pumping faith at that moment. Come on, pumping faith into the atmosphere through the teachings of the Word of God. And here, here, Romans 12, 1 and 2, I want you to get this piece. I'm not dragging this out because this is critical because this is what has happened. This, was, this is what I had to do right here. One of the, the key principles to what had to happen to me. Because again, if you're going to develop yourself, your mind has to be expanded, but it has to be expanded through this. And verse 1 says, uh, Romans 12, 1, 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed, and be not conformed, all right? Conform what? To this world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And here is what I had to go through right here. I had to come, my mind had to be transformed. 
my mind had to be, you know, he said, be not conformed. See, see, conformity means, uh, and then he told us this, uh, Dr. T and I, he said that you will not accomplish, and a prophetic word came one night we went to a service, and the woman of God pointed us out in the service, said, man and woman of God, the Lord said, you're, you're seeking for a building, and I see the Lord giving you this building. They blew us away. They had no clue we were even looking at this place. And I see you all getting the building unconventional. You're not going to go through a bank. You're not going to have to go through the bank and borrow the money. So we already had our instructions again right there. Even though we were going to try to go to a bank, he said, no. The prophet prophet said, no, the Lord is going to give you this building unconventional. Unconventional meant that he was going to touch a man's heart at 91 years old, which was Mr. Orvin, and allow him to finance us at 15 years. That's what we tried to do the first year as we were pursuing this building. Mr. Orvin didn't want to do it. But the second year, he allowed us to do it because God has already massaged his heart. God will massage people's hearts on your behalf. Child of God, let me tell you something. What belongs to you belongs to you. And no devil in hell, no devil in hell, in Hades, in the lake of fire, wherever they're at right now, in the dry places, the wet places, the smooth places, they cannot stop what God has ordained for your life. Nobody will stop the will of God when God has ordained for you to come into your very own. Nobody, I'm telling you, this was way beyond my capacity. You understand, a little boy from the east side of Jacksonville, from the Gitmo Ghetto, come on now, never thought that I would be owning, storing with a bunch of other wonderful people. I don't own it. We storing over, come on, a, a campus that was worth the, the value at that time and all the things that we've done up to this moment. Never thought that I would be the one that God will, come on, use as the head steward to be the one to help lead the people to accomplish what he's accomplished here in this beautiful city. And for us to do what we've done by the grace of God with no debt, praise God, and it's paid in full. Glory be to God with no bank. You better know when God is on your side. You better know when God's favor is on your life. Come on now. No devil can stop what God has ordained. Come on, Egypt. Come on, Pharaoh can't stop when God said, let my people go. Come on now. No, 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 no business industry. I don't care who they are, what they are, cannot stop you when God says they are blessed and they shall rise to the top. Nobody going to stop you. Come on now. I don't care what they try to do. I don't care what kind of curveball. I don't care they try to remove the rug from up under your feet. Baby, when God blesses you, put his hands a favor on you, man cannot do anything with you. I'm telling you what I know. Praise God. Man cannot stop what God is blessed. You got to know that you are blessed people. You are chosen priesthood. Come on. You are chosen generation. You are chosen. You're not the frozen. You're the chosen. Praise God. You're not cold. You're hot. Praise God. And God has put his hands on you to be blessed in this life. You're supposed to be blessed. You're not supposed to be suffering financially. You're not supposed to be going through. You know, we go through for the testimony of it because you're not supposed to stay at that place and be, God, my God, uh, frustrated the rest of your life because you barely making it. You can't do nothing. You can't take a vacation. You can't go buy a cheeseburger. You can't go buy nothing. You always got to know the devil is a liar. We break the back of lack. We break the cycles of poverty. Come on now. The Bible said he became poor that we might become rich, man. God wants us to enjoy this green earth. He wants you to take vacations. He wants you to buy a timeshare if you want one for your family. He wants you to go buy the dream car of your dreams. Come on now. To live in the house that you need for the square footage that you need to be comfortable in your life. Come on now. God didn't have no problem with us having. Your mind got a problem with you having. Praise God. Your mind got a problem with you having. Your mind... It's looped up somewhere. Somebody done told you that you can't live like this, that you can't afford this. Come on, y'all. Hit the show button. Yeah. Somebody told you, oh, you can't afford this. Your job can't. No, you're right. My job and my bank account cannot afford me, but my God can. <laughs> Let me say that again. My job and my bank account may not be able to afford me, but my God can. Glory to God. Come on now. God can afford his children. Praise God. We don't live by the bank accounts. We don't live by our jobs. We live, come on, by the glory of God, by the giving, by our increase, our harvest, and tithe and offering. That's how we roll, man. God says, I'm going to supply, I says, I'm going to supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. So my needs in the earth and your needs in the earth are not supplied by natural means. They're supplied out of heaven. Heaven ain't running short. Heaven ain't got no shortage. Heaven ain't no bankruptcy. Come on. Heaven got more gold, more silver than anything, and it ain't never going to run dry. Praise God. So God said, I'm going to supply you out of that source. I don't never want you looking to the world, even though I got to legally get it in the world, even though I got to le legally get it into tender into your hands. That's what we got to know what God will taint somebody's eyes and cause favor to come on you like never before. Somebody give you over a, a multi-million dollar business. 
Somebody will give you over a multi-million dollar facility. Somebody will, not that they gave it to us, praise God. They just, Mr. Orvin gave us an opportunity to, to buy it. And we bought it and we have paid it off, renovated it. Come on, y'all. Paid in full. Y'all know the deal. So but my point is, God would touch people's hearts on your behalf to give you opportunities of open doors. And if there's not a door that's open, baby, the Bible says he opened up the windows of heaven. And there's more windows in your house than doors. So, baby, you either open the door or open the window. It don't matter. Praise God. Or one of them going to open up. Praise God. And if he closed the door, I'm looking for a window. Praise God. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. The child of God is never stuck. And we are supposed to be developed through this word to get better. Come on. Our minds and concepts are supposed to get better of thinking about things and ideas, especially those that are entrepreneurs that are looking to expand. And this COVID meant to, again, knock the wind out of some of us, but thanks be unto God who give us the victory through Christ Jesus. This COVID, come on, has caused some of you to stumble into many blessings. Come on. What the devil meant for bad, God is working for his good and working for your good. Come on now. Because you know, even with this thing being on earth, you haven't stopped the beat, you haven't stopped eating. Come on, you haven't missed, skipped the beat or nothing like that. You are still, uh, I'll say, uh, all gas, no brakes. You know what I mean? You're still going forward in your vision. And it's getting stronger. Come on now. God is orchestrating this whole earth. And I really believe it's harvest time for the believers. I just believe that. I believe the whole earth is shaking. Come on. Shake it up. Come on. God is twisting it. Shaking it. Why? Because it's harvest time for the believers. Our 400 years is up, baby. It's harvest time. I want my stuff. I want my 40 acres and my mule. Not the 40 acres and mule. But I want equivalent what that means to in value. I want it all. I, I want it all. I, 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 I want it all. I, 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 let me say it again. I, 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 like the song Lenny Way. I, 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 I want it all, baby. <laughs> yeah. Lenny in the corner crying. I, 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 oh, 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 Y'all remember the song. And I cry, I cry, I, 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 I. Y'all remember the song. Don't worry about it. I want it all, baby. <laughs> I want it all, baby. I want every dime drop. I ain't driving. I ain't leaving nothing back. I ain't even being bashful about it. And until you claim your covenant rights and promises, don't you be bashful and, and don't you be shy about the blessings of Almighty God. Don't you, don't you, go, come on now, you lock into the fact, my God, that somebody paid a price and if your ancestors and forefathers and foremothers didn't get it, I'm claiming for, I'm claiming for my family that I'm, I'm the one in line with the promises of God to get it. We're going to get our stuff. You hear what I say? And I'm not going to close my eyes on it. You're going to see it. You're going to witness it. We're going to witness it in our generation. It's just harvest time for the believer. So I believe that the crooked places are being made straight. I believe there's hidden treasures in dark places that's got to release. The Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is being laid up, baby. They ain't spending it up. It's being laid up for us. And we're about to come into our own. Glory be to God. We're about to come into our own. People, y'all better hear what I'm saying. We're about to come into our own. That's why you got to be developed. Man, you want to be able to handle the capacity and the grace of this goodness. Come on, y'all. You want to be able to handle the bigness of this thing, man. If God trusts you, drop a million on you, you ain't going fool. You can still give him peace him off a hundred thousand. You ain't have Jack a few minutes ago, though. No? Well, that's a lot of money. You ain't have Jack a few minutes ago. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, ooh, that's a lot of money. Gosh. And give God that 10% and keep rejoicing. You know, if he bring that out of the sky, if he bring it out of nowhere, you know that he got more for me. I ain't gonna punk out on him. Come on now. Bless my church with 100000 Whoever else he told me to bless, it's just money and more on the way. Praise God. Well, if I give 100 I won't have to be a millionaire. millionaire. See, your mind done went, see, your mind, see, your mind already done went crazy already. If I give a church 100000 I'm not a millionaire more. You don't understand millionaire. That comp- see, watch this. Millionaire to me defined in my spirit is not capacity based on what's in my bank account. I already know I'm a millionaire. So you got to already know that you are, and that's why the capacity of what's got to happen got to manifest. Yeah, to the liquids, to what has got to happen. See, if you don't believe that you are already, then it's always going to stay away from you. But if you believe you are, it's going to be attracted to you, baby. So that's just, that just one of many. So I'm not just, um, see, watch this. We're not just going to be a millionaire, but we're going to be what? Multi, baby. Come on now. I ain't mad at Kanye West. I ain't mad at the boy become a billionaire. I ain't mad. We're going to get our portion. I ain't going to get mad at people. I'm going to get our portion. He created some shoes called Yeezys. Everybody laughed at him. I'm just saying. Yeezy? Okay, whatever. Billionaire now. I'm just saying. You better create your shoes. You better create your shirt. You better create your hat. Come on, you better create your watch. You better create what God has put in your spirit and not uh, uh, frown down on the idea, but get, get, get yourself in alignment with the will of God to know that he wants to do something significant through your life and cause 
billions even to come through the hand of the believer. I'm tired. I'm, I refuse to be poor, broken. I refuse to not have and be around here shucking and jiving and begging. And No, the devil is a liar. I'm serious. You can call me what you want. Call me the money. Call me what you want. I'm a faith man. I'm a trust God. The Bible talks about him providing and meeting all our needs, but also the, the fact that he became poor, that we might become rich. God wants us abundantly doing what he said. Above all, I pray that you prosper and do well. Come on now. He says, Prosperity simply means doing well, but it doesn't simply just uh, strategically to, you know, physically doing well and all that. It means all that. Prosperity simply means doing well, but also means doing well in every arena of your life. Physically, financially, health-wise, mental-wise, all that. Now, I ain't leaving out the money part because sometimes we play that down. Like, oh, no, no. You know good and well if God rained down a, a million-dollar blessing on you right now, your life will be turned around in an instant. You know you'll be doing much better, and all the arguments and all the stuff you and your wife in the fight about right now will be gone. All your headaches, all your, come on, all your tummy aches, come on, all your, all, all your turbulence will be gone. The Bible said money is the answer to all things. I don't know why I'm over there, but I am. Money is the answer to all things. So if you got a thing problem, he said, I got a money problem. I got a money solution. Come on now. Wisdom and money answer all things. So don't play it down like you don't need none. I'm trusting God for the harvest that's due our lives. That's why we want to develop ourselves. Because I don't want, God, watch this, I don't want to be undeveloped, so when he bring it, I'm going to lose it all. I don't want to have the mindset of a, of, of a person that don't know how to manage when he brings it. I need the capacity to be able to manage a house. If he, if he bless you with a, a 3,000 square feet home, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 10,000 square feet, I need the capacity to be able to handle that. I need the capacity to be able to handle my cars, wash them, clean them, let them know I appreciate it, not just to drive the car and then have it take it back or drive it, don't know. Come on, I'm, my point is you need to have the, the, the ability to manage and the capacity to be able to manage bigness, man. I'm telling you, when bigness come on you, we, I need the capacity to be able to say, this whole campus here got about 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, uh, 16 on top, 17, 18. Uh, we got about, let's say over uh, 1, 2, 3, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This got about over 25 units, AC units. This whole campus. All right? Ain't no small units. You know, it's about three tons and above, 10 tons, 6 tons, 8 tons, 10 tons. Now this whole this 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 uh, church facility right here got 16 by itself, 16 AC units. So we crank these bad boys up. We here praising God. I praise them. I ain't worried about the bill. <laughs> I'm serious. You know that in Santee Cooper. Anyway, I'm just saying. Oh, y'all know about my, my church family and over the years how that has been. But look here, God knew that when you get a when you get a bill and it's three or four five thousand dollars dollars three or four. I ain't talking about no three hundred. I ain't talking about no 500. I'm talking about 5,000, 4,000, 3,000 dollar light bill. You, you, you feeling me? What you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> what you gonna do? Huh? Three or four thousand dollar light bill. What you gonna do when they come for you? God knew, boy, you need capacity. When you had a when you have a seven thousand one hundred ninety one dollar mortgage every month. That ain't light. That's the mortgage. When he said, I'm going to expand your mind, son, $7,000. I mean, I used to go to bed every night, $7,191, $7,000. Well, I'll never forget that number because that's what we had to pay the mortgage here every month. And by the grace of Almighty God, we didn't miss a payment. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Oh, have mercy. See, when, 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 when somebody say, like, ooh, that bill is $1,000, I'm like, shoot, that ain't nothing. In my mind now because it's been expanded, y'all better hear me. When somebody say, oh, the bill is uh, $2,000, I'm like, that ain't nothing. No, I can praise God. Somebody says, ooh, that's a lot. But see, my mind has been expanding. Y'all better hear me. <laughs> somebody say, Bishop, I think the bill's going to run us about $3,000. I said, that ain't nothing. Why? My mind's what? Been expanded. When somebody says it's under a million, mind has been what? Expanded. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Ooh, glory. And it don't look so big. Come on now. So, so we had to do the parking lot for 88000 way beyond a million. Come on now. We had to do different projects here, you know, 3000 8000 9000 whatever the case, still beyond, oh, I said, man, it's less than a mortgage, praise God. You know what I mean? So my mind, God had to expand me and take me there to cause me to grow up bigly even than my thinking. Son, what are you afraid of $7,000 for? What are, you, what are you backing up from seven grand, Boy, don't you know I got that? I ain't going to my church, I ain't going to embarrass you. May allow the church to miss a payment, but I got to get your little mind to the point where you trusted me every month. 
that this stuff going to show up. And man, I'm telling you something. Oh, boy. Did God, did God show himself strong? You got to understand, we did this for 13 years before we got paid off. And we didn't miss one. We were, we were never behind. I remember the first time we paid the man, and we paid him. And I don't know what the hiccup was, but, the, you know, the money was in the bank. I don't know what happened. But anyway, he came to the premises, and uh, something happened. I don't, know, I don't know what happened with the bank. It was our first payment after two months. They gave you that two-month grace. And he came to this facility at one time. I don't know what happened, but the money was in the bank. And we, we gave him his money, you know, went to the bank, pulled it. I don't know what happened there, but that's the last time we ever seen him come to us. And it's the last time we ever were late. You know what I mean? Like, come to us about there was an issue from day one. Praise God. And we never had no problem. Seven grand. That's not light. That's not water. That's not insurance. That's not, you know. I, I mean, God, when God expands your mind, glory to be. Come on, y'all. Hit the ship. I'm almost finished, people of God. When he expands your mind, this is why be not conformed to the world. The world need a business plan. You need a God plan. Ooh, you need a kingdom plan. Pandemic, pandemic. You need a plan during the pandemic. Everybody, pandemic, pandemic. You need a pandemic. <laughs> Praise God. Be not conformed to this world. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing the mind. Why? Get God's concept on it. What does He say about wealth? What does He say about vision? What is He saying about dreams? What is He saying about? We have to get His mindset transformed. Trans also has the ability. In the word trans, mean moving. See, all the things that God gives you is going to be moving. Not conform. The world conform. The world stops and. And, and analyze and try to figure it all out and, and, and freak out. But the body of Christ, we are always being transformed by the renewing of our mind to this word. So our mind has given us the concepts and the ideas and the new thoughts about how we need to do things. Come on now. This is how our development happens, through spending time in this word of God. Oh, man. I don't know. I might want to give you one more point for tonight. We're going to be concluding this thing. But this is why I want you to hit this point right here about this, uh, this piece, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Being conformed, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'll give you point 15, we'll conclude with this one, praise God. We'll just let this be the last one for tonight, or for today, excuse me. All right, so point 15 is this. I'll give you this, and then we'll, we'll conclude with this one here. Development will cause me to grow beyond where I am presently. Yeah, development will cause me to grow beyond where I am presently. See, that's why you want to be developed. See, I, I wasn't ready for this thing when I first, we first bought the facility. I wasn't ready to build this. We, we, start, we bought the facility in 2004. We started renovating this part in 2007. I need that three-year mark just to just get my mind set for God to, get, to grow me into the capacity of handling this thing. You know what I mean? So he had to grow me into this. He had to grow me, my mindset into this. You know what I mean? Uh, to, to everything, insurance and all the stuff that comes with a, with a major facility. We have major campuses. It's a, it's a big deal. I mean, and, then the, and, and to know this, people of God, those that are tuned in this morning, uh, by the grace of God, no pat on my back, but uh, all glory be to God and also to the, to the applause of the people of God that love us and love this same church. That your whole facility, glory to God, is paid in full. Even the work, even the work of the parking lot that we did last year, y'all, of 80-something thousand dollars is paid in full. Being out of church. Now you put that together. How we all came together by the grace of God and made that happen being out of church. Nobody but God. Nobody but the grace of Almighty God. Expanding our mind. Because you know what? It wasn't on my timetable. And let me tell let me share this in closing. Many of the times, the things that you have in mind is not on God's timetable. The things you have in mind is not on God's timetable and cycle. I just like knowing, you know, uh, the pandemic. We're going to do the parking lot when we come back to church. God says, that's, that's what you think. You can do it when you come back. I want the parking lot done now. God will expand your behind, expand your thinking. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, and let me, let me share this in my closing because I got this to share in, 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 in five minutes. So something happened to me this past weekend, and I want, to, I want to drag it out. I had to type it out because I don't want to forget the thoughts that he was giving me. So you got to know when you're spending time in this word, right? This word is going to produce an oil over your life, a grace, an anointing. And it's real because we need God's anointing for everything we do. We dare not want to do anything without the anointing of Almighty God. So there's a grace that comes on our lives to accomplish the things that he needs to get accomplished. So this is what happened to me last week. Y'all know, many of you know that we, uh, by the grace of God, God uh, blessed my family and I to, to own a food truck. 
And so, you know, with the food truck, you know, we've been in for probably 40 some days. It's been an amazing experience. Um, so with that being said, you know, the, the food truck has components and stuff to it. And it has a generator on it, you know what I mean? Most food trucks have a generator on it, so I have a generator on it. And so anyway, we, we finished with a gig on Saturday. So coming back home, uh, me and the ladies um, got to my house and, you know, we were cleaning the truck up, getting it, getting it all cleaned up and whatnot. Uh, once we were getting the truck cleaned up, we were going to, you know, the generator operates like the power part of your truck. So, it, it, you know, when you crank up the generator, all the lights come on in the truck and all that stuff and, and, and all that good stuff. You know, you can operate the water and all the stuff that you need to operate. So got to the house and, you know, tried to k- crank up the generator and the generator wouldn't crank. I'm like, nah, you know, we just left a major function. Like the generator ran all day smooth, kept gas in it and all that, right? It gets to the house. I'm trying to clean the truck. It don't want to op- operate. So I was like, Lord, what's going on? So I tried to get it, pull it, pull it, pull it, nothing happened. Tried to pull a string, nothing would happen. Now I'm getting frustrated, like, boy. I'm like, God, first of all, thank you that you got us through that function. You know, I'm home now, but, you know, we got to clean up and get it ready for next week. This week, try to crank it, nothing would happen. So I'm looking, looked in the gas. When he got some more gas, poured it in there. And I said, well, not low, you know, show me how the level of gas is. Let me pour a little bit more, maybe it's, Maybe it's just more, more, more gas. I poured more gas in there, try to crank it, that would happen. And then the Lord just had me looking at the generator, and the, like the, the oil, the oil stick just jumped out at me. Check the oil. Check the oil. True enough, the oil was no oil in it. I said, okay. He said, this is what's your problem. You have the oil in the generator. I said, okay, I'm gonna trust what, what he's saying because it wouldn't crank. I mean, that sucker just would not crank. So this past weekend, I got the oil and got it. Matter of fact, uh, and uh, put it in there. And time I put that oil in there and pull that, pull that string, that thing cranked up so fast like it's been dying. Like, you know, like I've been waiting on you to put some oil in me. So he, he, here's the a, here's a longer the story short. And somebody told me that they make the little small engines, right? If you got a lawnmower men or small engines or something you're driving, uh, lawnmower or something, they make the engines now where... If it runs out of oil, if the oil get low, it won't crank. All right, that's just to save the engine. Some it's like some of you run your cars, the engine blow up, and it's got white smoke coming out of it because you didn't put the oil in it. You, know, you see white smoke from the tailpipe of your car, that means the engine blown. So here's the Lord showed me. He said, He says some people. This would this would word He gave me to give to you all, and this is why I know we need to be into the Word as people of God. He said some of you are trying to function without the oil. Some of you are trying to function your life without the oil. I'm not talking about the natural oil that goes in that engine. I'm talking about the oil of God, the anointing of God. He says, some of you are trying to function without the oil. The oil will cause, this would happen, the oil will cause your life not to work. And that engine would not work. Now, how critical was the engine working? The engine powers up other things. Other things are connected to the engine. I cranked the, um, I cranked the, uh, the, the uh, you know, the uh, oil generator up. It runs the truck. It, it, it literally turns on lights and all kind of stuff we can do to power all the stuff in the truck that we need to clean up or to do things we need to do to make money from the truck. He said the oil will cause your life not to work. And, and some of you, watch this, and I checked the gas, and watch this, like many of you know, your car can be all gassed up. He said, but some of you are gassed up, but your oil is out. But you're oiled out. You're gassed up, but you're oiled out. Most of us check the engine. Most of us don't check that oil. Some of you talk to check the oil, but some of you will... Check that gas like because the indicator will tell you when you're running out. And you know when you're low. But most of us do not go check the oil stick. And that's what burns you. Because that oil is out. He said, some of you are gassed up, but you're oiled out. You have a vision, but you ain't spending no time with me. Basically, what he told me the way he gave you. You're spending, you, 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 you got vision, but you ain't spending time. You're not, you're not checking in with me. And you know strategically, most men know this. You check that, you check, you know, make sure your gas levels are straight. And what? That oil and that water. Critical. And most critical is that oil and your liquids or your Freon or your water. Some of you have, you know, water in your car, you ghetto. But anyway, <laughs> and you'll find out what that do when the winter comes. <laughs> you, need, you need Freon in there. <laughs> you just pour water in there. Like, anyway, it'll work. <laughs> but Freon doesn't belong in the car. And then he told me this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to cl- close this. Some of you, he said the gas is the obvious that you see and has an indicator light. To show you the low or out, the gas. So he said the oil light, the oil light, like matter of fact, 
There's no oil light on the on the daggone lawnmower. I'm on my, on my um, generator. There was no oil light to show me oil is low. Some of you got oil lights in your cars as indicators, but most of the time those lights don't really give you any indication because some of you don't know how to read them. You know what I mean? And then he said this to me. He said the oil light of something that is hidden, like the gas thing is right there in your face. You know when you're low on gas. As a part of the general maintenance, it should be something that we learn to do by default. So you should get in the presence of God by default because you believe God, you're a child of God. Spending time in prayer, spending time in word, getting in prayer, getting in the presence of God. That oil can constantly be in your life, right? Because you got to check the oil level of your life. Come on now. You got to check the oil level. But most of us don't. And a lack of oil can mean setting everything else in, in, in a fit. The lack of oil in that daggone uh, generator threw everything into a fit. Lights couldn't come on. I couldn't run the water. I couldn't do nothing. And some of you are trying to run your life without the oil of God. You're trying to run your life without checking the oil. You gassed up, but there ain't no oil on your life. You got plenty of vision, but the oil ain't there. And the oil ain't in the car, baby, me, you ain't going nowhere. And again, thank God they made this generator to the point where the oil ran out. They won't even allow it to crank so the engine can, you know, it'll destroy the engine. So it's got this safety feature that, okay, the oil is low. We're not even going to crank up. But I was still trying to, see, some of you still trying to run your life. And the stuff ain't working. And it ain't working. I kept pulling it. And that thing said, I don't care how much you pull me, you ain't got no oil in me. And as long as you got no oil in me, I'm not working. And God is saying to some of you, as long as the oil is not over your life, you ain't going to work. Nothing going to work for you. As long as you don't get in my presence, spend time with me, the oil is run dry. And you need me so you can be oily and oily and anointed. Praise God. I love you all, man. I love you all. The lack of oil can send everything into a fit. Get in God's presence. Spend time with him, people. That's what's going to make us develop. Come on, while you're there, thank you for tuning in today. Bow your heads. We're getting ready to conclude this broadcast. I love and appreciate you all so much. Come on, say, dear God in heaven, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I now give my life to him. According to Romans 10 and 9, you said that if I would confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I accept Jesus Christ to my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you, Father, for this uh, teaching. Thank you again for giving me insight to how to develop myself. Spending time with you is key to development of my life. Spending time in the words, my mind can be renewed to the word of God. Help me to be that person to be on point and in tune with the things of the kingdom of God. I now dedicate my life back to you according to the scripture. I am your child, and I thank you for receiving me as your son or daughter in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. If you said that prayer, child of God, welcome to the kingdom of God. You're in the best family in the whole wide world. Thank you for tuning in. Come on to these minutes that we had this morning. I appreciate you so much. Hey, at the bottom of your screen is ways that you can give it to the church. Uh, I want to throw it out there because, again, you all have been so wonderful to give. We're going to come up. We're going to meet with our church family meeting. Church family meetings coming up on the Zoom, and we'll be sharing some of the things we're going to be doing, upcoming things, uh, and, and really getting ready to come back pretty soon. I, I'm saying we're going to come back tomorrow. We'll give you the plan and what we've been thinking about when we want to come back. Uh, so again, go out, do your vaccination shots, pray about it, whatever you need to do. Let's get this thing, this COVID off the earth. Keep praying, keep trusting God. Second strand, third strand is broken in Jesus' name. Won't come and hide, and come on, life jack the, the land. So we need this thing, excuse me, going in Jesus' name, amen. So again, thank you again for tuning in. We appreciate you giving a mobile app, PayPal, all those means are there. So thank you again. I have a new cash app, uh, Bishop Taylor made uh, with the dollar sign in front of the bishop. So Thank you, for, thank you for those that are sown into my life. My cash app has changed. And for those that are Zelle me, I love Zelle. Zelle comes straight to your account. You have to go through all those other means. But hey, Zelle or cash app, whichever one is convenient for you. I love you all and I appreciate you so very much. Stay tuned in to these broadcasts, all right? Stay tuned in so you can keep knowing what to do and where we're going to be executing to do it. Hey, remember these words from Acts chapter 17, verse number 28. For him, we live and move and have our being. You already know. And by the way, come on, it's all about him.